Hey everybody, Ben, Somerville Gardener, and I have a lot of work to do the next couple days. So I'm planning on breaking these up into a bunch of different videos, so if you haven't seen one of these yet, uh, go ahead and search through the channel page. There's going to be a bunch of uh, smaller videos on how I'm doing my planting out of different things. So let's take a look at what we have today. So going around this group, we have a Red Ruby Supreme Guava right here. I went ahead and found myself another VDB, a Violet Day Bordeaux Fig. Uh, we got a bunch of papayas that are going to be going out. Strawberry Guava, a Lemon Guava. We got some uh, Butterfly uh, weed or like a milkweed that's going to be going out. This one I think is going to stay in the pot for another year or so. Just I want to make sure that the other guavas survive outside before putting my nice pretty Malaysian red out which already has a couple of fruits. There's one right there. And then there's a bushy seed from seed loquat right here. More papaya. This is a, which one was this? This was a red lady papaya. And then I found this golden goddess uh, bamboo. Just got done filming the, for the, uh, the cantaloupe planting video. If you haven't seen that yet, make sure you check the channel page to check that out if you're interested. But let's go ahead and do loquat. We're gonna do a loquat planting today. So this is the nice bushy kind. Like I said before, this is a seeded variety, so uh, it's just a, a generic. It's not anything fancy or special like the, the gold nugget or something like that. Uh, I've already got a, a gold nugget right over here, so, and I like to have a bit of variety, so let's not plant all the same things. So let's go ahead and grab this guy up, and we're going to take this guy right over here to where I've got a little stick in the ground, and we're going to plant this right over here in this pretty little area. How's that look? Oh, it's gonna look wonderful, I hope. Got the bird bath, the fig tree. Oh, you know what, fig, loquat. Loquat's gonna get big and bushy filling in this area. So let's go ahead and measure a little bit and get about 10 feet or so from that fig. I wanna make sure that, that fig gets plenty of light itself and the uh, loquat's not getting too close. So be right back. There we go. Now we got it about 10 feet back. Let's make sure I don't back up onto something. Ah, yeah, that's gonna look nice. Especially once that thing gets about that big. Now, I am by no means gonna tell you guys to use this as like a, a gardening hack idea or anything, but if you go to Lowe's Home Depot and you see that there's like a hole in one of your uh, bags, I, I like jungle growth from Lowe's myself. And every once in a while you see where somebody's poked a hole in the bag, you know, it's not that bad. You still have everything pretty much in here you know oh you know uh, like a half cup of soil came out not a big deal uh they'll give you these and they'll even give you a nice little bag for it uh 50 off not a bad deal so if you do see some of these uh, bags the holes in them don't avoid those and set them off to the side go ahead and put them on your cart and say hey this one's got a hole in it can i get a discount on this bag close 50 off now let's see here to plant this guy right here you are not going to be able to stay right there so you got to move, buddy. Go ahead and put a stick right there in your place. And we're going to, oh, don't need that anymore. Go ahead and rake away all the wood chips. And this area right here is a bit of a wet area. And you can see that even though we haven't had rain for uh, 10, 12 days now, it's been a while. Uh, I'm not even a couple inches underneath the wood chips and this nice dark color, that's not because it hasn't gotten bleached by the slum. That is because it is wet. And because I know that this is a historically moist area of the ground, uh, the whole neighbor's yard comes down here, and then there's a bit of a raise right here behind me. And I know that the water collects uh, up under here, or it has before I put the wood chips down. The grass typically grew okay until I got back into that area, which is why I put the tarot over there to help soak up some of that extra water but I'm not really going to be burying these very far. I'm going to till up and loosen up some of the soil. I've already done a, a dig test to actually dig down and see how far down this nice dark soil goes before it hits that uh, sandy clay that I've got here. And if I remember correct, it should be around five to six inches where it's good. So that's about all I'm going to dig out here is just a couple inches down and then I'm going to mound up the rest of this bag around the root ball so that all the extra water can kind of sheet off. You can have good access to the air for those, uh, the roots that are up close to the surface, those little uh, air feeder roots. So the one thing that I don't want to do is dig this too terribly deep, but we are going to need a nice wide hole. So 
So a lot of this stuff might need to move just a little bit further out. There we go. Let me dig the rest of this out and I'll be right back with you. One more thing just to make this job a little bit easier. Typically, I like making messes. I like breaking things. It's fun. In this case, I really don't want all this nice dark dirt. Let me bring you in here. I don't want this nice dark dirt to be messing with my heavy layer of compost I got right here. So you can see nice dark dirt. I'm gonna go ahead and dig my we'll call it a shallow hole, shallow grave to go ahead and put the root ball in. And I'm gonna take this extra dirt, put it in the, the cart, and you can see what uh, just the top layer of dirt does when it's covered in wood chips for, uh, what are we at, about eight, nine months now? Let's take a look. All right, let's go about right here. Give it a diggy, 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 and diggy. And away she goes. Yeah, this is just way too clay thick. Uh, I'll dig out a little bit more and you'll see what I'm talking about here. So after just a couple of months, a few months, uh, the wood chips sitting on here, you can see that I've got a few inches of good, nice dark dirt, and then it just hits this clay. This right here, very sticky, very nasty stuff. It makes little clay poops. That right there is basically going to hold water. If I go digging this thing down all the way, putting my root ball down in there, it's kind of like sticking it in a clay pot. I don't want to do that. So we're just going to pull it down a couple inches just to where we get into that thick, sticky clay. Set the root ball on top of a nice little bed of some of that jungle growth. Get all these poops out of here. I'll go ahead and put the jungle growth down here. Film this most of the way in so the, the root ball isn't sitting right on that clay and just rotting those roots out real good. You know, like almost immediately. And then we're gonna kind of fill up from this edge up here and just kind of mound it. Give it a nice little raised mound so as the water comes down, it's, it's able to uh, drain away. And since we know we're gonna end up dumping all this in here anyway, may as well just make a huge mess. I like huge messes. That should be about good there. That way we got some good well-draining soil right there on top. Make a little, uh, yeah, a little layer so it's not just in that clay, that clay pot that it would basically end up forming down there. You don't want to do that. Don't dig a hole and, and shove a, a root ball in there because you're just sticking it in a clay pot at that point. Now we'll go ahead and grab this guy here. Give the pot a nice little hug. I like to just kind of stick a toe in the bottom, just kind of loosen that up a little bit. And then it should just pop right out. Wow. Yeah, we got some good roots on that one. Take a look. Great roots on that one. It looks like a total of one, two, three, four, or five stems. So that are, that'll be a nice little uh, multi-trunk tree or shrubby bush. I'm gonna bust apart some of these roots down towards the bottom just to kind of encourage it a bit to branch out. Just give those a little loosening. I don't think there's any specific direction that I'm wanting to face this thing, so I'd say it looks good. Go ahead and bury it a bit more in the uh, jungle growth. And I'm just gonna dump this whole bag on here because it was half price. Half the price is twice the fun, right? I'm pretty sure that's how the math works. Spread this out a bit. Give it a nice little cone of a base. Wow, that's, that's quite a bit of dirt. Yeah, that's, that's a real nice base. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and just cover it up, give it some water, and I think we're gonna call this job done. And just make sure you don't put your wood chips right up against the tree trunk base because as these rot, they will uh, encourage fungus to grow, which can then impact the trunk of your tree. And you don't want a fungal growth on your trees because then, uh, then they die. Don't want that. Now, when it comes to watering these trees, what I will typically do, ooh, we got a creepy crawler, what is this? Oh, he went away. Kind of looked like a little millipede or something. Haven't seen one of those in a while. Oh, so 
When it comes to watering uh, a nicely, uh, nice little tree like this, what I'll typically do is come out here about every day, sometimes twice a day for the first week if it doesn't rain, and go ahead and give it a, a nice thorough soaking around the area. After about a week, I'll switch it up to about every other day or so, the next week, every third day. Uh, but then at that point, I'll pretty much for the rest of the season be coming out here at a minimum every three days to go ahead and just give this a nice little water because I want to make sure that this thing develops its root system really strong around the area. If it does bud or put any flowers out, which for a tree like this, I, I really don't expect it to in its first year. So it's going to be at least another year or so. So I want to make sure that these roots get really well established right here uh, in these wood chips, let them all break down, feed the whole thing, and hopefully it'll just keep coming back every year cross-pollinate with my other two loquats over there, and I'm gonna have a lot of loquats. So make sure that if you enjoyed this video, you hit that like and subscribe button. There's gonna be lots of videos coming. I am a new channel. I greatly appreciate all of the subscribers and everybody that just stops by for a single video watch. And if you would, just go ahead and check out the channel page for Somerville Gardener. I've got a lot of different gardening tips, uh, how to make uh, tags for different trees, how to plant different things, how to transplant, all kinds of stuff. I'm in zone 8A, or no, uh, 8B, 9A. Almost messed that up. And honestly, I'm not a professional. I'm no kind of expert in anything. I'm just a guy that lives in, in the uh, Charleston area, Somerville, South Carolina, and I want to push the limits for what I can grow. And so if it's something that you're interested in, if you're in that 8B, 9A kind of area, you're not sure what you can grow, or if you are in 8 or 9 and you want to see what I'm up to and what kind of crazy plants I'm killing sometimes, but hopefully they're not all dying. Uh, hopefully some of them are living. Check up on me every once in a while and see what I'm up to. Uh, it might be some craziness that you might be interested in. Maybe not. Uh, either way, I hope to see you in the next one.